Previously on Engineering the Jigsaw, we've talked about various ways that communication can work in vehicles based on networks and, and network protocols. We haven't really explored that terminology protocol or network protocol though. Let's fix that now. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from VetsGB. Welcome to this foundation level episode of Engineering the Jigsaw Foundation episode number 17. What are protocols or what are network protocols? Now, in the past, we've talked about, for example, how in the early 1990s, networks started to be used to link ECUs together. This was uh, episode F10. In episode F11, we talked about how vehicles in the future might be networked using additional networking technologies such as Ethernet. In many, many episodes, we've made use of an example of traction control where an ABS ECU is able to use networks in the vehicle to send a request to an engine management system to please reduce power, which is the traction control function. And more recently, we've talked about diagnostic systems and how diagnostic testers are able to send requests and get responses from ECUs. So these are all many kinds of different uh, discussions we've had around the use of networks without really trying to define in, in more details um, how things are, are working. Now, to start with, there's this word protocol. And let's quickly just deal with that. So a protocol is just a formalized way that we might want to request or transfer information. And whether we realize it or not, we make use of protocols in our human interactions. So uh, this is, is most common uh, or, or most easy to understand, I should, I should say, probably in, in terms of how we might talk within a group of people. So within a group of people, if we want to talk to one person, then obviously we'll use their name and we'll use their name to denote that we want to talk to just them. So this is in networking terms, a unicast. So uni as in single or, or one. Now, of course, we might not only want to talk to one person, we might want to talk to many of the people, but not all of them. So for example, we might want to talk to all the people whose collars uh, have, a, have a collar on their shirt. So in this one-to-many scenario, we have multicast is the technical term. And then of course, there's a chance that we might want to talk to everybody, one to all or broadcast, in which case, of course, we'd say something like, hi, everybody, welcome to Engineering the Jigsaw. Now, this is all kind of ways of addressing, and we know addressing in other contexts as, as well. So if we're writing a letter to somebody, or we want to send something to somebody, and we want to put that in an envelope, of course, we use some addressing on the envelope. And of course, we then put our, our whatever it is we want to provide to the person inside the envelope. So if it's someone inside the vector office or someone who lives on my street, they would probably, after putting whatever the 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 contents are into the envelope. They, they'd probably just write my name on 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 the on the envelope because they would then know where to to take that to. Of course, if if they don't live as, as a neighbour to me on my street, they they might want to write my house number on there to help them remind if they've got a number of envelopes, remind them that Ian lives in a particular house number and get that envelope to the right house. Now, if they live in the same town as me, but not the same street, of course, they might also want to add the street to that addressing information. If they don't live in my town and they've got a number of envelopes to deliver, then of course, they would also add the town to the addressing to allow them to distribute envelopes to people in many towns and many streets. The next level down, of course, they might add region information if they don't live in the same region as me. And of course, if they don't even live in the same country as me, they will add my country to the addressing to make sure that the envelope with its contents reaches me as they wish it to do so. So we have this kind of idea of, of levels of precision in, in addressing or, or layering, we, we can think, where we have different levels of precision or different levels of abstraction, to use a, a technical terminology for it. And we make use of abstraction layers 
in a, in a similar way when we are describing network protocols. So there is an ISO standard which is uh, defines something called the Open Systems Interconnect Model or OSI or OC model for short. So confusingly, of course, ISO is OC. It's the same letters re reversed. Um, so it's slightly confusing, but they are different things. So one is the International Standard for Organization and one is the Open Systems Interconnect model. And the open systems interconnect model describes how we can think about protocol in distinct layers that have a st distinct purpose in communication. A bit like we have different layers in addressing that have a, a distinct purpose when we're addressing a, a letter to somebody. So the, the first layer, which is the one that our software that we would normally work with will directly interact with, is called the application layer. So this is not where our application itself sits. It is the protocol that the application uses sits in layer seven, the application layer. So hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP, which we discussed in episode F14, is a layer seven protocol. Beneath here, we have layer six, which is the presentation layer. Now the presentation layer isn't about PowerPoint or slides or, or any other kind of um, presentation software. It's about how we encode information. So for example, if we want to encrypt data or compress data during our, our data transfer process, it's the presentation layer that would typically be used to provide those kind of functions. And of course, on the receiving end, the presentation layer is responsible for decompressing or decrypting the information to provide to the application layer, which would extract the data that goes to our application. Now, Beneath here, we have something called the session layer. The session layer is used if we want to start and stop connections. So layer five protocols are about initiating and, and, and ending a, a session, a communication session. Now, if you have ever downloaded a large file from a website, and the downloads become interrupted for some reason, you've been able to restart it, that kind of restarting of a, a download, that conceptually fits to the, the session layer of the OC model. It may not actually be done by that part in, in reality, but conceptually that's where it kind of fits. Beneath this, we have something called the transport layer. The transport layer exists because everything we've, we've got above we talk, just talked about downloading a file, could be a large amount of data, which could be too big to fit into a particular network protocol, the, 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 the data chunks that we want to send on a particular network protocol. So the transport layer has the job of chopping up the data that we want to send into smaller chunks that are able to be sent as a, a single piece. It will typically add to that information, a sequence number, so one, two, three, four, and, and so on. So that on the receiving end, the transport layer on the receiving end is able to reassemble our little chunks of data into the bigger set of information that we actually want to provide. Below layer four, we have layer three, the network layer. If you know about IP addresses, then this is where IP addresses Live. So this is where we start to think about the logical addressing of information to be able to send it across networks, to be able to make sure it reaches the, the, the um, recipient correctly or recipients correctly. Beneath this, we have something called the data link layer. Now the data link layer is the last point at which we really have information. Below the data link layer, we get into physics. So when we're using a, a networking technology, what's actually being sent across the network is pulses of electrical current or voltage. Um, we may have some radio waves in the case of Wi-Fi. Uh, of course, we have optical pulses in the case of uh, communication over optical fiber, fiber optic cable. So the data link layer has the responsibility of taking the information from the network layer and converting that into the physics that will happen on the physical layer. So the physical layer is the wires, the radio frequency link, the uh, optical fiber that we want to use to actually transport information from one place to another. Um, 
It's important to note that many networking standards only focus on a subsect of these layers. So for example, Ethernet uh, is really in, in the lower layers. It doesn't really talk about uh, five, six, and seven. And, and some high level protocols really, uh, some, some protocols group layers together. So five, six, and seven might be grouped into a single layer in some networking. And particularly in the automotive industry, layers one and two are really important. So layers one and two are what are typically specified in the standards that define the CAN bus, the local interconnect network or LIN bus and FlexRay. Everything else is then up for us to decide if we want to use it. So the, the basic networking capability comes from layers one and two. And then we have to decide if we want to use a transport layer or we want to have a presentation layer involved in our software that we want to have in our, our ECUs. And it's common not only for some layers to be skipped or merged, but also for some layers to be subdivided. And for example, on the slide here, the picture here, we see the data link layer and in brackets, we've got Mac and LLC. So you may know about Mac addresses, media access control addresses. If you've ever looked at the configuration of a, a wireless router, you'll see a list of Mac addresses. This Mac media access control is a sub layer of the data link layer. And LLC or link layer control is a sub layer of the data link layer as, as well. So these are just two relatively well known sub layers of the data link layer. And the other um, layers that we've got here are also able to be subdivided. It's just that these two are maybe slightly better known than others, or you may have at least heard of the terminology MAC address. And now you know where it comes from. It relates to a sub layer of, of layer two, the data link layer. Now, how does this kind of work in, in practice. Let's go back to our, our letter. So we've got now not just our envelope, but we can see the, the contents that we want to, to send. And this um, has some kind of seal on it so we can verify that it's been sent from whoever we, we think it is. Now, a network protocol, typically we, we have a chunk of things we want to send. We'll come back to that chunk of things in, in just a moment. Now, the first thing we have is we have a header and this corresponds to the address on our envelope. So a particular network protocol layer, we may insert information into a header. It may include things like, as, as well as addressing like the, the length of the data. So how much of a, uh, a possible amount of data might we send? The next thing of course is our payload. Payload corresponds to the contents, our letter, or form maybe that we want to send to somebody. And the last thing we have is a trailer. And, and this is really optional. So the, the payload is always there. The header is kind of optional. Certain parts of header are, are, are optional, definitely. But the trailer is really, really optional. It's really not there, the, um, de on, depending on the layer you're in and the kind of protocol you're using. The idea of the trailer is it allows the receiver to work out whether at uh, the corresponding layer, the data has been correctly received. So it's not got corrupted somehow in transit. A, a, a major job of the data link layer, in fact, layer two, is to make sure that the conversion from physics to information doesn't highlight any disturbances in the physics of the network communication. So making sure that we haven't got spurious bits due to some kind of inter, um, interference or maybe um, bits kind of disappearing due to a bad connection, something like this, uh, or symbols, we should maybe say. So network symbols quite often are talked about as well. So we have this kind of a, approach where we're able to check at different layers in our, our stack that the information has been correctly processed and, and then received. And this set of header, payload, and trailer has a terminology associated with it. It's called a protocol data unit. So a layer in our OC layer stack will create a protocol data unit, and it will then pass that down the stack to the next layer. Or alternatively, it will receive a protocol data unit from the, the layer beneath it. And how this works is we have this idea of a, a PDU, protocol data unit, and we're really passing up and down the stack. And it's a bit like Russian dolls. We start with a little one and we put that into a, a slightly bigger one and a slightly bigger one and a slightly bigger one and a slightly bigger one. And this is why the transport there is important to chop things up. Now, this means we have this kind of nesting of PDUs. So our higher layer PDU with its header and trailer and, and payload becomes the payload of a lower layer PDU. 
Now, the lower layer PDU doesn't understand at all or need to understand the higher level header and trailer. It just all becomes payload. And that lower layer PDU adds its header and its trailer, if required, to send that information down to the next layer down until we hit the data link layer and we convert to physics. And we often talk about frames. So PDUs in the data link layer are often called frames. So people talk about CAN frames, Ethernet frames. These are concepts that exist in the data link layer and then are sent using physics over the, the physical layer of our, our network. So as a summary, automotive network protocols make use of a physical layer over which frames are sent. Higher layer level or layer protocols use low level protocols to send and receive the data. So we have this kind of nesting Russian dolls thing that's kind of packed up on one side to send and unpacked on the other side to, to receive. Protocol data units are used to group the data at each layer for sending. And theoretically, what you have is you have a logical transfer of data between the sending protocol on one side and receiving protocol at the corresponding layer. So we kind of have this uh, ability to send data using layers. And this is why the layers are important because then you can design your communication to match your overall needs. That's all we've got time for. So please visit our website for details of Vector's support for automotive protocols. And in particular, look out for our free e-learning on different network protocols at layers one and two, and also some high level protocols such as XCP. On the subject of high level protocols, diagnostic protocols are generally high layer protocols. And we are going to bring you some new episodes focused on diagnostic protocols very soon. I'm Ian Cunningham from Better GB. Make sure to join us after the music to find out more about how you can contact us. Really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Engineering the Jigsaw. Make sure you, if you have, you give it a thumbs up in YouTube. If you have questions or ideas, then give us a comment down below the video. If you don't want to do it in public, if you want to keep it private, then drop us an email to our special email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. You can find a link to a webpage with those contact details on in the description for this video. Make sure that you subscribe to get notified as we release new episodes and as Vector publishes its excellent and informative videos on its YouTube channel. Make sure to check out our playlists. We have our foundation episodes playlist and also intermediate level playlist as well for you to binge and catch up with. We'll catch you for another episode soon. Goodbye.